One of the joys of my job is when there's a notable person, specifically with a cowboy hat, comes through town, I get to talk to him. Today, Buck Taylor of Gunsmoke fame. And sir, it is an honor. Thank you very much for visiting us in the studio today. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here, and thanks for having me. Well, you have quite a few Oklahoma ties. We were discussing this before we went live here. Uh, you want to relate to the people just the various ways you tie into our community here in Oklahoma, including I think you met your wife here. Well, that was really a good story. I met her here in 1995 at the World Quarter Horse Show right here in Oklahoma City, and uh, one of the happier days of my life. But I also have family here. My, my dad was, he went to high school here in class in high school, but I have cousins, and uh, I had a couple of aunts that have passed away. One was, her name was Faye Taylor, and she worked for Mr. Gaylord at the Daily Oklahoman. She worked for Ruth Myers, uh, a really ladies fashionable boutique. She was a fashion illustrator. So I, I have cousins, uh, the Sorensons and the Glovers and uh, family and uh, it's a special place to me. Buck Taylor just name dropping now. <laughs> Uh, but you mentioned your dad, Dub Taylor. Let's start there um, in his career because he's a well-known actor. Uh, and as a result of his career, you kind of grew up around cameras and lights like this. Uh, that's true. My, my dad, born and raised in Georgia, uh, moved to, to Oklahoma City with his family, went to class in high school. And after high school, he picked the largest instrument, the xylophone and the harmonica, the smallest one to, to, to play. It's like a they parent's go, dream. What's, yeah. what's the instrument they want to play? The loudest the biggest one? and the smallest. <laughs> anyway, he, he went into vaudeville at a young age and met my mother there, who was a dancer, and uh, they got married. And then, you know, vaudeville, it, it went out of business because the talking movies came in. And he moved back here to Oklahoma City and was trying to decide what to do, you know. Uh, a famous movie director by the name of Frank Capra was doing a movie called You Can't Take It With You, and it won Academy Awards, uh, James Stewart, Gene Arthur, Lyle Barrymore, and all these people are in it. And the ad went out looking for someone to play an unusual musical instrument. Just well, so happens. My dad, yeah, my dad packed up the Model A with my mother, who was pregnant with me, my sister, and they went to Hollywood. And they rented <clears throat> a little apartment building at the corner of Western <clears throat> and Hollywood Boulevard. That's where I was born. My dad got the part to the movie. And uh, that kind of makes me a real Hollywood cowboy. Absolutely. Western and Hollywood. From there, they, they moved out to the San Fernando Valley, and, and I grew up around movie sets. Talking with Buck Taylor of Gunsmoke fame and, and many other uh, film TV, let's talk about how did you get into Gunsmoke? I had a 20 year run on TV and I believe you joined it in 1967 maybe. That's correct. I, uh, I, I was in the Navy from 1965 or 1950 to 1960 and when I got out uh, I did some stunt work. I was pretty athletic back then. And one thing led to another. And for eight years, I was an actor. I was under contract at Universal Studios. Uh, I'd done a TV series called The Monroe's. I guest starred in over 100 TV shows uh, before I ever went on a gun smoke. I did a gun smoke, and they killed me off. And I said, well, <laughs> that's it, you know. I worked on gun smoke. I, I, I watched it growing up. They killed me off. I'll never do another one. But man, that was great. How many people can say, "Hey, I was killed off on gun smoke"? Six. But months, they brought you back. Six months later, they said, uh, "We're going to test. We're going to test about five guys for the part of Newley O'Brien." And I said, "All right." They said, "Would uh, you're interested?" I said, "Yeah, I'm interested." So my my agents lined it up. And uh, I was the very lucky one that they got the part. And uh, Gunsmoke, some of the best things in my life have, have happened because of Gunsmoke. Uh, meeting my wife, you know, for one thing. But uh, the people I have met on this journey, which, which is now 60 years it's been on the air, 
It's phenomenal. And they still come up and hug you, and, and they still remember me as old as I am now. They still remember an aging newly. And uh, it's a warm feeling that I, I can't explain. It's hard to explain. Gunsmoke was based in Dodge City. Um, yes. And that's one of the reasons that you're here is to promote uh, a casino in Dodge City, Boot Hill Casino. How'd you get tied up with these guys? Well, Boot Hill Casino and Resort uh, chose me because of my association with, with Gunsmoke and Dodge City. I'd spent eight years in Dodge City. Actually, I'd never been to Dodge City, <laughs> but it was done in Hollywood. But uh, the relationship was great. Uh, and they said, you know, what we're trying to do is, along with the city of Dodge City, is to make this legendary Wild West town better than ever. So I'm, I'm helping in that way as a spokesman to encourage people to, to come see this fantastic place. The, the things that went on at Dodge City don't even compare with what, what went on in television and in movies. Uh, it's, History's great. We want you to come there, enjoy that, and be part of it. And this summer, we've got some really wild things going on there with the rodeo, for instance. We're going to have over 100 Longhorns going down Main Street, Front Street, Dodge City. And uh, I think I'll be leading them down there, which I love to do. It's going to be great. Buck, have you ever been on a cattle drive? Yes, I have. How many people can say they've been <laughs> on a cattle drive? How is it? Well, it's, it's hard work, actually. <laughs> I ranch in Texas, and uh, I have to move my cows around a lot every once in a while, so I've, I've been on that. But I've also made a movie about a cattle drive called The Sackets. So I, I, I've been on screen and off screen on cattle drives. And uh, Dodge City, you know, the Western Trail went right from Texas all the way up to Dodge City, right through Oklahoma here. And uh, millions of head of cattle came up the, uh, the Western Trail and the Chisholm Trail. And uh, Dodge City is queen of cow towns. That's why you got to go there. And if you ever go there, you got to tell them Buck set you. Then I can <laughs> name drop. I know Buck Taylor. He mentioned the, uh, the tours. Let me mention this real fast. From Penn Square Mall, a couple of these coming up, April 5th through the 7th, May 15th through the 17th, and then later this summer, June 13th through the 15th, uh, leaving from Penn Square and coming back to Round Trip, I believe. And you can meet this gentleman today at Penn Square. I believe yes. the times are 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 11 to 6 p.m. And uh, bring your DVDs from Tombstone, Gettysburg, Rough Riders, Gunsmoke, and I'll be happy to sign them. I'm giving away free autographs with photographs. Uh, I have some artwork there also. And uh, we're going to have a great time. So we're coming there to have fun. You know, you can dress like this or dress any way you want. Get your cowboy hat signed. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple more questions. Yes, sir. Do you like the meet and greet? And what do people, eat, people typically say when they see you? What stories do they bring up? Uh, what kind of a guy was Matt Dillon? And I, I tell him he was a great guy. And I give you, I'll put it down in a nutshell. Matt Dillon, James Arness, won an award one time. John Wayne presented it to him. Well, John Wayne was about... He's about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Pretty big dude. Jim is about 6'8". So when John Wayne introduced Jim Marnes to come out to receive this award, John Wayne looked at him and he <laughs> said, you're bigger than I am. And uh, Jim Marnes replied by saying, taller maybe. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he was. Very humble That's man. That's a good humble response. I loved him. A couple yeah. icons on the stage yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, why is the cowboy, actually I have a story for you, speaking of Penn Square Mall and meet and greet, uh -huh. the worst job I ever had uh -huh. was back in college, I went to a temp agency and said, hey, you know, give me some jobs this summer, I need to make some money, and typically they would throw me in a warehouse situation, hey, you know, move boxes and pallets or uh -huh. deliver furniture or whatever, but one weekend they said, Dave, you're going to Penn Square Mall, the mall you're going to, uh -huh. Dave, you're gonna be in the fragrance, fragrance section with CK1, Calvin Klein, Cologne. Oh, yeah. You're going to be that guy when people walk by. Uh -huh. CK1, CK1. Uh -huh. And people walk by looking at me going, <laughs> really, you're that guy? <laughs> it's the worst thing. I called the temp agency that Saturday night and said, I'm not coming back tomorrow. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So that was my pin square meet and greet. Yeah, but it just smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like carefully not to get anybody in the eyes or anything. Hey, back to the cowboy mo yes, motif. Sir. 
Why are cowboys still so highly regarded? Why does America love their cowboys? It's, uh, the cowboy is salt of the earth. Uh, and they still exist. Where I live in Texas, in Northwest Texas, and most all of Texas, there are the big working ranches. Now I've been a cowboy uh, in movies and, and in my real life, and, and, I, and I say I'm a cowboy, I'm a real cowboy, but it's spelled R-E-E-L. The guys I live around are really real cowboys, and uh, it's the epitome of, of what I think Americans dream of being. I think all of us have that cowboy image, and the image is someone who has integrity, uh, soft-spoken, mean what they say, and uh, don't have to roar like lions and brag and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I love being around them. They're, they're real, they have to be quiet around animals so they don't say much. They're the Gary Cooper types. And uh, when they have to move, they can move really fast. There's no braggadocious. Uh, they love their horses. They love the life they live and they do it because they love it. They don't get paid a lot of money, but it's, it's as romantic as you can think it is. And uh, it's something that in my lifetime and in my passion will never go away. And that's, that's, that's what I love about the American Cowboy. One last talking point with you, Buck, and, and this dovetails nicely with what you said there. Your artwork, you, you do a lot of painting, uh, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's a way of capturing the cowboy way of life in, a, in, a, in something that will live forever. You know something, Dave, that our history is passed down from one generation to another. Now, it's either done word of mouth, or it's done through paintings, or it's done through books, or now it's done through movies. And we can choose to keep it or lose it. And the way I think, I wanna keep it. So what reflects out of my paintings and out of, out of the movies that I've been associated with, um, I choose to keep it. And uh, you have a great place here called the National Cowboy Hall of Fame, Western Heritage. And uh, I'm extremely proud that both my dad and I are honorees in that as, as Western performers. And uh, that means a lot to me. As he mentioned in 1981, he was inducted as a trustee into the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. And in 2006, awarded the Western Heritage Award. Congrats. Go see Buck Taylor. He's at Penn Square Mall today, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I enjoyed the conversation. This was a lot of fun, sir. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. And I'd love to see, bring your, like I said, bring your CDs. I'll sign them. Just like to talk to you. I'm very accessible. Buck Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>